estate agents. Welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga. He's the man with the plan and the producer of the show. How's it going, Joey? Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What's oh, going on, okay, man? Okay, then. Let's get right into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're the Real Estate Marketing Maniacs coming to you from Security Title Studios. Got an awesome guest with us today, and that's Blair Ballin with the Blair Group. We How's it going, Blair? someone in the background, too. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah, we have somebody in the background. <laughs> if you're watching the video, you're not going to see him. He's yeah. hiding. Well, you might see his leg. <laughs> no, no. Greg with security titles in the house. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Louder. What's up, fellas? There, there we go. He it probably got there on there. He is. So how are you doing, Blair? Very good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming yeah. by. Absolutely. You're going to share some wisdom with us, right? I hope so. He's got some good wisdom. Yeah, he does. Yes. Why don't we start with uh, letting the agents know how long you've been in the business and what got you into real estate? Sure. So got licensed about 19 years ago. Wow. Uh, had just graduated from college and bought my first house. Uh, the realtor I used, I felt really sucked, didn't represent me, <laughs> and because of that, wanted to get in the business to help others and avoid those types of experiences. If you're in the business and listening, yes. you know who you are. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, yes, he that, does. That person's <laughs> probably no longer in business. He is still around, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. Oh, Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Oops. <laughs> it's okay. Truth. Truth. 19 years. Wow, you've seen a lot of ups and downs. Yes, both. Both. And back up again. Back up again, yeah. Yeah, and this is a good market. Yeah, it's right. been a really good market for the last few years, huh? You ready for the down? I am ready for the down, but I don't think there'll be a down for a while. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. All right. So why don't you share with us what you're doing um, now to be successful? What, what are you? I know you mentioned you do a lot of prospecting. I do. Yeah. Using the phones, right? Yeah. So built much of my business based off of prospecting. Uh, started with expireds probably like eight years ago, and now that's been mostly online buyer leads. I felt the seller market just dried up a little bit. Um, lots of competition, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, certainly a lot of competition with online buyer leads also, uh, but just running a bunch of ads tied in with you know Zillow, Realtor.com, Facebook, whatever, uh, and and doing very well with that. So you're working with a lot of buyers then right now. Yes. Yeah. So, mostly buyers. So is the inventory currently is that a big struggle? I I hear that from other agents, and for whatever reason, it doesn't really seem to be as much of one with me for whatever reason. And it's not that the buyers are looking in higher price points or whatever. It just seems like there's really not that many issues with it. Got it. Okay. Hmm. And you're working mostly East Valley or pretty much? Maricopa oh. County. Okay. Maricopa. There we go. There's okay. a, that, that's there's a, a small a, area. A small <laughs> area. Ooh, one of the largest counties in the country, I think, right? Try to avoid Apache Junction, but yeah. Okay. Why? What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of septic tanks. There are a lot of septic tanks, <laughs> there yeah. There are a lot of septic tanks, oh, yeah. Gosh. All right, so phone calls. How uncomfortable is that? Or how long did it take you to get comfortable with phone I, calls? Yeah, I don't know that I can remember, you know, back to when I first started making them, and it was more out of that I, I had to do them, so I just quickly adapted to it. I know that other agents have issues making them, fear of rejection, fear of just making the call, period. Um, with me, I just think I just got on the phone and just started making calls. It wasn't... Like if I if I get rejected, like it's it's really not a big deal to me. I know others get impacted by it, but mm -hmm. it, it it didn't matter because like that was the only way that I was able to make money or that I could make money. So there was there was no choice. Mm -hmm. um, for those that have other choices, then you know maybe it's a different scenario. And I don't know that I can really suggest a great way other than just to do it and and to get used to it and make calls, hear the rejections. Like it's not really a big deal. Um, in my opinion, you know, you're, you're calling someone, yes, we have a valuable service to provide, but um, like eventually they'll be receptive to it. Got it. Hmm. So 19 years ago, does that mean you were using the rotary dial? <laughs> no comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you didn't have the technology back then, like the, yeah, you know, like the today with the mojos and, and all that stuff, right? Or was so, there something so, similar? Uh, so back then, I, I wasn't making calls then. Like, okay. I really wasn't doing much business at all. It was just part-time kind of thing. Okay. Um, everything was more probably newspaper-based at that point. Or ma I should say magazine. I wasn't doing well with newspapers, so magazine ads. Oh, I remember the um, the real estate book and all those were yeah. out back in the day. And yeah, all the fun ones. You pay for that full-page ad in yeah. there. Yeah, so, fancy. So I'm curious. Uh, so you're mainly calling buyers. and I mean, can you give us a little glimpse of your uh, scripts for that? Sure. So uh, it's basically, hey, Jeff, this is Blair just following up on a message from my website that you're looking to buy a home in the Phoenix area. It's easy. That's it. 
That's it. I'm not interested. Sweet. So when they say <laughs> that, then I basically just come back. I mean, it, it depends. That first of all, that really doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah sure. And I know you're just saying that because sure. <laughs> most agents think that's what people say, yeah. but most agents are wrong in what they think, and then that's why they're not making calls. That's right. Um, <laughs> but if they do say they're not interested, then I'll I'll just be so like. Was that just an error on the website? Like, you know, what happened? Uh, try to dig a little bit deeper, but again, it, it really doesn't happen. So, sure. no, that makes well, sense. Well, I see your name. I see that your IP address clicked on my ad on Zillow. <laughs> so, come on, what's going on? <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so, Zilter, Zillow and Realtor.com are two of the top ones that you're. Yes, and getting. and I go back and forth on Zillow. Not that uh, I don't feel that Zillow works. I, I feel. Zillow is probably the best website to be on as a realtor advertising because in my opinion, every consumer knows about Zillow yeah. and that's where they go. Oh. So it's important that we're on there. But lately, uh, just because of some changes and what my budget was, realtor.com is actually performing better. Wow. Got it. All right. Zillow has done an amazing job with their branding. I mean, it's Absolutely. just... Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone knows it, it, Zillow. Yeah. Uh, you know, Blair, there's one thing that you said before we got on air. You, you said you're an introvert. Uh, and phones made sense to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, explain that. I mean, sure, phones because you have to talk. Yeah, it's it's more just talking to a stranger uh, face to face that I have issues with. Ah, so like in a bar setting, like it's very tough for me to just go up to anyone and start talking. Sure, or at a networking event, whether it's realtors or whoever, like it's just not something that I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. On the phone, though. And, and it's not that I'm, I'm fearful of rejection in, in person. Uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, I can go door knocking. I have no problem with that. Yeah. It's just that people that maybe aren't associated with business, I get more introverted with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but with prospects and stuff on the phone, uh, very little issue with it. Doesn't mean I don't get burnt out by it, but um, really no issue calling at all. Like I, I could call for eight hours a day if I really had to. Wow. And I have, wow. but... Um, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All Hear right. that, Jeff? It's fun. <laughs> all right. Next question. No. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's hearing all the f bombs and the rejections and the people. The stuff that people come up with is amazing. Wow. Like how upset they are. Like even uh, I do quite a bit of mass texting, and the responses that okay. we get back are just so funny. Like how how annoyed people are at life. Like, how is it possible <laughs> that one text could be that upsetting to someone? <laughs> Can you think of the one that stands out the most? I mean, th this one's not going to sound that bad, but, you know, like you're a leech on society, like whatever, you know. Um, yeah. You know, okay. you get the F-bombs, you get the swearing, you get uh -huh. all that. Uh, but, like, it's just funny. And, and, and I try to get back with it. Um, like, there's this guy that still responds to emails that are on drips that I have. And um, like he just emailed me after a year the other day, like stop, uh, you know, whatever texting me or stop emailing me. And I'll, I'll respond back with like, what do you prefer, baked or fried meatballs or whatever? <laughs> and just some random question back that has nothing to do with anything. And he didn't respond, so it doesn't matter. But like you just have to turn it into something fun. and Sure. Because it's not the <laughs> most... Yeah, it's not like the most fun activity, so you just have to turn it into yeah. fun. Okay. Oh, okay. Turn it into fun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So if you were telling an agent today, so let's say a new agent or somebody you bring it onto your team and they're like, well, I don't really have business yet, but I want to get started and I want to do some calling. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them is maybe the first types of calls that they should make? Probably to their database. Mm. Okay. Those are usually, should be in theory, the warmest calls to make. They know them. Uh, they should trust them, all that kind of stuff. Um, so making those calls and then gradually working up to whether it's expires, buyers, you know, Fizbos, whatever. All right. Okay. Do you see more success calling during the day, or in, do you do like any calls in the evening time? Super morning, early. Morning. Early, early morning. Or? So I was once at a KW event, whether it was family reunion or, or mega camp, uh, and Gary had spoken about calling at seven a.m., which I thought was just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Exactly. And got back uh, home. Started calling at seven, and and in my head, much like what we do as agents and people think, you know, you're going to call at seven. People are going to be really massively upset. Mm -hmm. They're going to drop more f bombs on mm -hmm. you, or they're not going to pick up. Yeah. Started calling at seven. I don't have the biggest data sample to talk about because I didn't sure. keep doing it for a lot uh, or for a long time. But um, out of the calls I made, let's just say I've made 500 calls at seven a.m. Mm -hmm. I would say I had one person 
that was sort of mad at me. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was a delight to talk to. More people pick up the phone because they're probably wondering who would be calling, so it's some type of emergency or whatever. Um, And it was a phenomenal time to call. Uh, As far as best times to call, I I don't know that there is a best time because it changes. It really does seem like it changes on a weekly basis, and it depends who you're calling. If you're calling expireds, I've had awesome success uh, Friday afternoons, Friday evenings, and then I've had really... Um, bad results calling, um, you know, recently, let's say on a Friday afternoon. So it just depends. I mean, I know there's a school of thought that says that you should call first thing in the morning, more people are going to pick up, you know, all these Harvard studies or whatever show that that's the best time. I completely disagree with that. Wow. I don't, I think that's more of an activity just to say that you've done it and get it done and then you can move on with your day. Hmm. Uh, But I don't really agree with that first thing in the morning is always the best time. Got it. So the seven o'clock in the morning ones that you did call were those mostly expired. your? Oh, were they expired? Only expired. I would I would okay. never suggest calling a buyer lead that early, oh. unless that's um, like a Zillow or Realtor dot com lead that comes in. Like if that comes in at two in the morning and I'm up, I'll call them back or I'll call them, uh, and I've had very good success with that. So whatever time it's whatever real time lead comes in, I would respond to them right away. Got it. If it's if it's from some type of CRM or database, then I, I would, uh, and it's a buyer, I would not call until 8 a.m. and probably not later than 9 p.m. Okay. Have you looked into any of the services that will offer the 24 seven? Like you, like if you didn't want to answer between midnight and 6 a.m., let's say. Sure. Have you looked into any of those? I have. Yeah, I've used a couple in the past. My favorite, my favorite is Agentology, okay, oh, yeah. um, which is a twenty four seven basically ISA for online buyers or sellers. Mm-hmm. They're probably, in my opinion, the best program out there. Uh, I don't have them currently right now, just because I feel I can convert better because I know the market better than they do. Mm. Um, and it's no disrespect to them. I mean, they've built an awesome business, but uh, I just. We as agents know our markets better, yeah. um, but outside hours, that's that's a very good option to go with. Okay, All right. and whatever program it is, absolutely. And you mentioned too that you are doing some Facebook ads now. I am, yeah, and having a little bit of success or surprise success with some of those things now. Yeah, yeah. For probably the past ten years, Facebook has been awful for me um, as far as leads go. Uh, so just recently launched some campaigns with people managing them for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is tough to find, in my opinion, a good campaign manager. Also, Facebook continues to change. So someone that knows all the stuff that's going on there. Uh, yeah. but yeah, just launched some buyer campaigns. I would say property specific ads are probably the best, uh, versus like a list. I, I think, I personally think that that type of methodology is over. Um, and then I just launched a home evaluation campaign that surprisingly is performing well also. All right. You know Sweet. why I think that's performing well is because before, let's say a couple of years ago, that was what everyone did. Mm-hmm. Now everyone stopped and only a few people are doing that. True. And, and, and that's a great point. And I think that's also a reason why direct mail probably right now would be the one, one of the best things that realtors could do uh, is everyone, you know, EDDM came out and everyone started doing it. Uh, and then for whatever reason, people stopped. And then now homeowners aren't getting that much stuff in their mailbox from real estate agents. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a great time to send pieces. Obviously, they need to have the right call to action and stuff, but sure. I think it's a great time to drop stuff in people's mailboxes. Hmm. Well, I think the issue with agents mailing now is um, they spend all the money on the Bentleys and the BMWs. <laughs> and oh, No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, spend a lot of money on stuff. Very true. <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, and let's see, you have a team currently? I do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's growing. It is growing. Yeah. yeah. Looking to add at least six agents by the end of the year and then 20 by the end of 2019. There you go. All right. So if agents that are listening or watching want to reach out to you directly to talk to you about that, how would they do so? Totally, yeah. So just uh, give me a shout at 480-233-6433. Find me on Facebook, text me, call me, whatever. And you will call him back, see? Because he's good on the phone. He answers the phone. (laughs) Or he answers the phone. (laughs) Just don't call him at 2 (laughs) a.m. You know, speaking of answering phones. Yes. All right. So um, I got a sign call and... I answer, I answer my phone. Whoever, sure. You know, I don't even put, uh, 
It's um, because he has a flip phone and you can't see who's calling. Yeah, exactly. I don't have caller ID. And, and he's not lying. Here it is. Here's my flip phone. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And I don't put my address book on here because I don't want to know. Who, I just want to pick it up. Because wow. if it's someone I don't know or I know and I don't want to pick it up, I won't. Sure. But anyway, so I picked up the phone and he go, uh, she says, you know, I want to take a look at this house. Can you give me some information? She goes, you're the only one out of five signed calls that answered the phone. And so now she's a potential buyer. Awesome. Me. So yeah. just answering the phone is huge. <laughs> Makes a big difference. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Why do many of them not? I don't think so. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I had to, you know, I don't get to throw that one in there. No, very no often. you don't. Now you finally. <laughs> well played. I found time. one there. All right. So, Blair, are you ready to get in the ring with the maniacs? I, I am. I Let's love wrestling. Let's do it. Sweet. Here we go. Give them a mask. You Going mask? down. <laughs> I'll get you a mask. <laughs> no. What kind of wrestling do you like? WWE. Actually, right. WWF. Yes. There okay. we go. So we're all in the same age. Right so now. I don't know if Greg has seen, but I have some old pictures when I used to live in New York um, where we had a friend that worked at Madison Square Garden and I was able to meet a bunch of wrestlers, including Andre the Giant. So oh, I have a picture no of me with way. him. It's pretty cool. I'll, I'll, send, I'll show it to you. I'm oh, like how, super how, jealous. How, how yeah. So he he's he was seven. seven seven four. He's like seven three. Two, seven, four. three. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he was... Um, I mean, it was just like in the bar area of Madison Square Garden or whatever, but he was like sweating. His hand was the size of my head. Like it was just, it's this funny wow. picture because I look scared as hell. I wasn't, <laughs> but I look scared as hell because it's this massive dude and then like this seven-year-old kid. But it's it's a great picture. And I'm wearing like a stupid shirt, so it's even funnier. <laughs> so who's your favorite wrestler? Yeah. Um, from that era, I don't know. Now I would say The Undertaker. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back there. yeah Undertaker. Gosh, who did I like? My, my, well, my dad used to watch all that stuff way back then. You remember like Jimmy Superfly Snooker? Yeah, he was my oh favorite. yeah. And yeah. do you remember way back though, Bulldog Bob Bob Brown? I mean, that was like oh, that really was way back. That one I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think I was like I two. That was. No, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> all right. We're, we're we're so. What about UFC? No, not into UFC. No. All right, all right. Until they put all the cool stuff on and come up with your character and all that yeah. there you go. i think ufc would be pretty cool to watch i like watching it but yeah anyway. all right so let's get moving Damn. um oh i did that already but i'll do it again there so what's go. the best advice that anyone's ever given you uh own everything around you and that you do all right like sweet like how about it. a favorite mobile app zillow zillow okay a book recommendation 10x by grant cardone oh yeah there we go uh, yeah that's How about cool. a productivity tool or software that you use on a regular basis? Ooh. His phone. Ouch. CRM phone. Uh, my cell phone. There. Okay. <laughs> no, that works. All right. And we got one more question. We'll have you draw it from the mask. Oh, careful. Okay. Careful. There we go. Oh, there it is. This is beautiful. What is that, velvet? All right. What'd you get? Who is your favorite singer or band in high school? Oh. Motley Crue. Yeah, there you there go. You go. Motley Crue. <laughs> Motley Crue. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the ones that I, yeah. <laughs> Kiss and Motley Crue and Aerosmith and all those guys. All right. Well, thanks, Blair, for being in. Thanks for having I me. I truly appreciate you being here. Um, until next time, this is Jeff Underwood. And Joey Sampaga. Signing off from Security Title Studios. We'll see you later. Adios. Bye-bye. Oh yeah. Like yeah, usually the rapid fire stuff. Yeah. You probably made it the most.